Yeah. Well, you can uh, for the key holders, you know, for the Patreon only stream for the key holders, which you know, if we had a Patreon, that's where it would go. <laughs> which I should get. I should make a like a weird sound effect, you know, and like if we had one, and just like clip to the show, like show some place where I would keep a Patreon to it, you know, just for the for the memes, see if anyone would get it. But don't know, don't know. Anyways, hey everyone, welcome to an exciting new episode of Low Key on the Wheel of Chairs Network. We are back here on a Monday night. Sorry for the last ones, I had a splitting headache because of my daughter was, how you say, just being, I don't know, just being awful. <laughs> she chose violence and um, she realized she could do damage to me and she just kept doing it. Um, then the next one was... Um, awful holiday called labor day which I, you know i was sitting around drinking and barbecuing so i was fine with it so but here we are um back here on exciting you know, on this exciting monday by the way I'll make sure i know my name is harry aka the moving target and um this is gonna be a fun exciting episode this news popped up about this whole safe thing i really don't want to talk about the politics of the person who owned that safe don't care <laughs> <laughs> I really want to talk about something completely different other than that guy's politics. <laughs> Whether it's right, wrong, or it's politics, don't care. Not my problem. My problem is, you know, is the safe and how you can probably pick up a cheap safe this week. Anyways, I don't travel solo, so you know I bring friends along with me. So let's introduce the cast of characters we got with us. We've got Reinhold with us. Reinhold, why don't you go say hi? And a Talk class. <laughs> We're not going to be talking about a, the Patriot that, that is at the subject of today's uh, conversation. I did have two things I need to bring up from the last show that we did to okay. like things that one, one I got wrong Ooh, and one okay. funny story. Okay. I think I got wrong was when Tim pool was talking about sucralose. Mm -hmm. I, for some reason in my head thought he was talking about sucrose, mm. so, which the only difference is, is a couple, like one atom added to the, chemical makeup of the molecule but that's a whole other whether we want to go down that path or not blah 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 but it's still i did i did want to make sure i fixed that mistake that i made um the second thing is we were talking and it kind of goes into the topic we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. when apple refused to give up the codes for the phone mm -hmm. um they were refusing to give it up because they didn't have the technology to unencrypt it because that's the way it had been designed. They didn't have the back door that the, the, F, the FBI wanted them to have. Mm -hmm. um, what I found interesting was the, one of the people who was very, very much against Apple not giving up the, the phone to the feds mm -hmm. was Donald Trump. He's very vocal about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. He, he was very, very insistent that hey, they had a they had a warrant, they had a right to get into that phone. What are you doing stopping them from doing so? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. It's an interesting little thing. I I'm, I'm sure that will come nowhere in play anywhere this year. It's, just a, it's a fun I... little anecdote that you know has nothing to do with anything. Nothing. Nothing. No, that piece of information is not going to be any what useful. Uh, let's see our other cast member that we have with us. We also have Vincent. You know, sitting over there in the uh, '90s palace. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm always here just to be the the sounding board for most of the ideas. Sounding board. Um, what call you layman's? Know? I guess because I know I'm for for a fact that I'm not as technically involved as either one of you guys on the tech side. I, I don't know. I don't know. Say lame is. <laughs> 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 Yes, you know I, I am Javier. I, I, I am I am Javier. You're supposed to sing it like I am Javier. I thought about it, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to blow people's ears. You didn't want. You yeah. didn't want to get rid of our three viewers. Just, yeah, of course. <laughs> just do the musical. <laughs> so God. musical episode scheduled. All right, moving on. It's okay. Oh, my oh, wife is actually watching the Star Trek uh, Next Gen. Um, yeah. Strange New Worlds, watching their musical episode right now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, next time we get a Twitch payout, I'll blow all the money on voice act, uh, voice coaching, so we'll do a uh, uh, musical episode. 
<laughs> nice. I, did, I did have somebody on a uh, Instagram post that I made earlier uh, last week, late last week, saying that they uh, wanted to know where they could hear me at because they missed me on wall. So oh. I, them, I said, you should check out Low Key Wall on Monday nights live. We record it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, we uh, we're going to have also more Reinhold explains, you know, uh, coming up because with this new most important election of our times coming up, <laughs> you know, Reinhold is a treasure trove of most important election of our time. <laughs> I've been through about 12 most important elections of our time. <laughs> You know, and I remember, it's the most important. I remember 1980 was going to cause World War Three. Um, it, it was going. We were going to all be dead. Um, it, the Russians were going to attack. It's, it was uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun time. That see, was, that was really important. That Why didn't that happen? I wouldn't be alive now. See, <laughs> way better that way. Everybody had already been going. We wouldn't have to worry about TikTok and shit now. Then he wouldn't have <laughs> suffered. So exactly. they've been rebuilding society. <laughs> <laughs> you you would like that too much. <laughs> you'd be too happy. You'd be happy then. People be would like leave Dr. you Strange alone because everybody be like, have to be in their own camps. There'd be like ten girls for every man, like Strange Love had the idea for. Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> That's awful. It would have to be a no nagging rule, is that what you're saying? No, I'm just just saying, like, no, it's just awful. I feel bad for them. I can't entertain, you know. See, see, the issue is the issue is that Harry would roll the ten yonderes and they would literally have a battle royale to see who lasts. Oh my god, I just thought about that. (laughs) Yep, you know exactly what would happen. Oh man, that'd be terrible. Last one standing wins. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, they'd be (laughs) so deadly. (laughs) What a scar, too. Well, which I would find hot. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, so today I finally found a good use for Facebook Messenger. Um, I know, strange, right? Me, me, Facebook Messenger. I found a use for it. Um, so sitting in the wall chat, I get a message from uh, one of the people that are in the uh, Weird Materials Facebook group chat and sent me a cool meme of someone like, hey, I've got a question about my car. And they sent them the money request. (laughs) (laughs) I was just like, hmm. Hmm. (laughs) Never thought about doing that. (laughs) Now it's my new go-to. My go-to every freaking time. (laughs) Hey, unless it's my mom. My mom can ask me all the questions about her car. She wants. Everyone else, I'm sending them money. You want my expertise? Pay me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pay me. Hey, my computer money request. Except uh, uh, Liz, you know, you know, you're still a lawyer. If I ever need work, I'll, I'll fix your shit first. <laughs> Make trade skills. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so yeah, that was that. That was that going on today. I was. I'm shocked too. Freaking shocked. Um, but I mean, what? I was, gonna go my, I was gonna go to my thing. Uh, I was I was gonna say, I mean, there's a market for everything, and I guess that's one way to use Facebook Marketplace. But by literally going, pay me for my work, freelancing at its finest. Not marketplace, messenger. I mean, I was making a monkey's reference. So oh, yeah. That nobody, nobody here is gonna get. So I'm not gonna sit time and explain it. Like the like the band, the monkeys? Yes, the band, the monkeys. Right, one alive. One's still alive now, unfortunately. He's the you know, he's the one of a whiteout fame. Is he that one? The whiteout? <laughs> <laughs> Wool hat of the monkeys, his mom. Uh oh, Wool hat, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He passed he he just recently passed away. Is the yeah. it was the second the he was the, the most recent one to go. Hmm. I you know I know of the monkeys and a little bit of the monkeys because <laughs> I kept playing the VH1 thing special on that when I was trying to sleep. So <laughs> like I have it here subconsciously it's in your mind somewhere. But I have to like dig deep for it. Um, have I been uh, Ace ask Has anyone been playing Armored Core Six? I really want to play Armored Core Six. There are some small things that have been keeping me from Armored Core Six. And they know what that is. Same thing is going to keep me from um, Payday 3. Payday 3. Like, I've got to 
really close friend who is a brother to me who's like and he's hyped he's been watching us play payday 2 and all uh, and it was like he'd been he wanted to jump into our lobby when we were like struggling with big bang <laughs> but he didn't because he was just like just how i was doing it and uh i was like dude you could have just jumped in we really could have yeah. used to tell yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, I really like. I want to play Payday Three. I want to get in the beta, but I have a no de nuvo rule. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and no it's Denuvo. firm. I, I'd rather go play backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, honestly, I'd rather play spades with Spangle, even though he reneges all the time. Okay. Oh God, <laughs> the worst. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. We, we we get like ten books. Come on. <laughs> Go on, I can't. <laughs> it's also it's also a phrase that it's very difficult for for me to get away with saying. So. What say it? Just say it real quick. Hold on, hold on. Let me hit record. Playing playing spades and reneging. Uh, got him. All yeah. right. Save it, it for later. Save it for later. I said yeah. neg. I said reneging because a lot of people <laughs> say it the other way. Get you in trouble. I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up and be fine. Pretty sure probably speed that up for us. Um, no, 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 Ace. I have not played Armor Core. I think I, I haven't actually played a, a new release game since Fire Emblem Engage came out. And even and then the game I've been playing now has literally been a free to play fan made game. Yeah. Yeah, you so, like that game. And and I've been playing the best game released in the last fifty years, apparently, to all the media hype called Boulders Gate Three. Oh man, I'm I'm here. I'm so I, I've been sitting on the fence about buying Boulders Gate 3. Everyone makes oh god, it looks so good. It's so good. It's very good. And there's a whole bunch of different ways you can play the, like there are things I do. I just think this is the way you're supposed to go through this these this specific instance or the specific encounter. Then I go online, I see people doing different ways, and it's like, oh well, I could have done that. It would have been it, you know, we would have had a whole different ending. It would this this whole thing over here wouldn't have been available to me if I had done that or this makes something else available to you that you wouldn't have yet. So you get a lot of branches mm -hmm. that change the gameplay where you could play it again, choose different things. And it would be almost, you know, a, a different outcome. You'd have different experiences because of it. So hmm. it makes sense. It's kind yeah. of, it's, it's really nice like that. So nice. nice. And, and I'm not one of the guys going through and doing all the romancing with the, the companions thing. I don't really care about that stuff, so I don't bother with it, but there are people who really into that. So, it's there for them. Mm -mm. He said he, he uh, he's on the fence about Boulder's Gate because of his uh, feelings about Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> well, the only the only real problem with with Boulder's Gate three, there's only one real glaring problem with it, and that's that it's based off five E. How's that? Five E. Five E is a <laughs> decent system, um, but it is I, the Wizard of the Coast problem. Yeah, it could have been four E. It could have been could have been four E. Could have been four. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, honestly, like four with three five, though. I mean, I'm just saying, four is been three, three five. I it would take me forever to level, level up. Three point five would have took me yeah. forever to level up. Four point <laughs> probably would have made sense because it does play like a video game. <laughs> but the yeah. problem with five E is, I guess there's some some they they've changed some of the spells so that mm -hmm. like this one spell that's supposed to be you cast it and you forget about it is now concentration spell it takes up a slot and it's just you know that sort of thing and it's just yep. um you have to be careful with some of that stuff so if you really if you really know the 5e very well you'll see the frustrations and differences right yeah we're playing like a 5e game with producer paul and there's some things i really want to do with my character that i built the character for because i built her for 3.5 but we converted to 5 5e and it's just like i can't do the thing i really wanted to do because i can't do because it doesn't either exist or i don't have access to it because how 5e is but that's you know there Mm -hmm. yeah, again, I've heard but, good things about Boulder's Gate. I just haven't played. There's a lot of that stuff. It was like I've heard good things about Boulder's Gate. Uh, I heard good things about Sea of Stars, which just recently came out. That's like a turn-based RPG. Star hmm. yeah. I, I've heard, I've heard <laughs> things of Starfield where it's like it's good, and then you realize it's empty. That's see, a lot of people are saying <laughs> very realistic. And this is this is something I actually heard somebody say was that. Starfield needed to have the uh, dead man, the no man's sky treatment. They needed a couple <laughs> more years of development and it would be as good as no man's sky. And it's like, sky really? Somebody, somebody, yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's a turnaround for that game. Yep. I mean, and I agree with that. They've done a great job. 
that sometimes when you release too early and you're in a window and then you go back and work through it and make the game better where it's how you should have done it the whole time mm -hmm. could will produce a great which, game so but, so you which is, which is the, so you give the leeway big to thing going on so you give leeway to Madden, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that limited window. <laughs> totally. That that, totally. that was the big um, the big controversy about Baldur's Gate three was that they had waited so long to put it out. It was such a good game that now everybody's going to expect that out of AAA games. It's like, yeah, how about we have that a little bit? You know, let's let's actually, actually have some good try games and care and, like. Yeah, it's, it, I, it's I, a whole it's a whole big fight going on. Now. I've heard Armor so. Core Six is really great. They have a lot of insane amount of customization, which is something that you really want in a mech game. Mm -hmm. You can customize just about every part of a mech that you want, from what I understand. So I've heard that's really great. But it's just one of those things. It's just like I just haven't bought any really new games. Uh, I, all my free money has been going to audiobooks because I need to get through work somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Glad you glad you stay real well read. Well, we might have a new podcast ready to listen to later, so I'll I'll give you some information on that next week. Oh, nice, nice. All right, uh, I'm up that podcast by ad space. I'm low key. Anyways, um... <laughs> I'll I'll put it up on the board where I have that right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I don't I don't make I don't make my residuals off off the board, sir. <laughs> So, so Harry, what 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 avatars are you vehemently against? <laughs> like the big ones. The what? Like the advertisers that you don't want to do with like Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, yeah, if if we did a Raid Shadow, you wouldn't do a Raid Shadow Legends? I didn't raid. We do a magic Shadow. spoon. Uh, this this cereal is actually pretty okay. It's just <laughs> I've eaten it. I've, I've eaten it. It's pricey as hell. I'd rather just eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the the obvious one is hair is Harry's razors, right? I uh, actually love Harry's razors. Yeah, it is my go-to razors. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, but they don't give out that nearly one. millions of advertisements. Is you know the other one? Yeah, I know the other razor companies, other lesser razor companies. Yeah, but so, it's a, so do you also draw the line at the VPNs? Oh, definitely, definitely hard line, <laughs> hard line. Unless they're actually security focused VPNs, no. No, at least fly by night. Open VPN clones, forks. Screw you. Yeah, we're not going to be doing any uh, oversimplified ad insert for NordVPN. Like, like no, he does. I can't. I can't. I have. <laughs> I can't. I I, sh I I crap on them too much. <laughs> it's like uh, it would make me too upset. I can't. I, I, that that affects my personal opinion of myself. We're taking ah, money from them, and I couldn't show it correctly. Yeah, so someone would like someone would no, knows that there's a truck of money sitting next to me. <laughs> now you come on one time, so you know I've really been giving us a lot of in, a lot of looking lot into of thought, and research, of... and I really think maybe I was wrong about this. <laughs> it's like I said, you got to be sincere about it. There's a few VPN companies that do walk to walk and talk to talk when it comes to VPNs, you know, and they're great, but they are not the ones that do all the big advertising. They're not the ones that do that. How about HelloFresh? Would you do HelloFresh? No. No. <laughs> no. Crowd Cow. Green Chef. Right, can we just stop sh shilling for like a couple of other stuff for shilling? But like not How about shilling? Walmart? We'll do some Walmart. No, we'll no, it's fine. It's fine. What we're doing now is just building the ones that we aren't going to get sponsored from. <laughs> this is, this right is like the... Uh, like the uh, Josie and the Pussycats movie, where they were making fun of mm -hmm. product placement by having a ton of product placement in it. Exactly. It's the satire and irony of it all. Yeah, but we're not getting paid from it. They didn't either in that movie. They got no well, product well, I, placement. I like to get movie. paid. I want to get paid for product placement. <laughs> <laughs> well, they exactly. were hoping people would but get the. They were hoping people those. would get the irony and oh. watch the movie and make money doing that. Oh, yeah. But unfortunately, all the reviewers were completely dumb as a post, thinking. Well, this is just hypocritical. They're talking about product placement. Then they've got tons of product placement in the movie. I'm like, yeah, that was the damn point. Well, that's their fault for not paying for reviewers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try totally. to get try to get organic. Gotta get that critic fresh, reviews. Gotta get that organic, fresh review. <laughs> Plebs. Homegrown right. cash review. <laughs> Certified <laughs> fresh. <laughs> um, as you guys know, pop. There's been some leak of information about uh, possibly of uh, certain Hollywood companies uh, using uh, 
money P- money and PR firms to pay critics to give positive reviews on certain films. And uh, there's no proof on big films, just some small mm-hmm. ones right now. Yeah. The Allegedly. my favorite my favorite one was like one of the, the examples they pulled out is they told the, the critics they could still be harsh, but like be like good like nice harsh, but still give it like a six. <laughs> even though they're just shitting on it, like give it like a nice harsh, you can still be mm-hmm. mean, but like mm-hmm. on a positive spin. It's like you, that, that is, that's not how that works. <laughs> but a positive mean. Oh, is that how that works? All right, can we talk about the lock, please? I mean, wait, we lock Ness. I know there were a bunch of people there last like two weeks ago, right? Trying we are twenty minutes in, so right? We are roughly 20, about the time. We are twenty minutes in, and if we don't stop now, it's gonna be thirty minutes in. <laughs> this yeah, is why you don't have me on the show, the big show anymore, right? No. So, oh my god, <laughs> that's, that's not why. You're just, just scheduling things, and I thought you were doing something else. We talked about this, okay? All right, all right, all right. But we are going to have you up the spooky October show. All right, all right. You know, you know, you know what? I'll give you another new Tim Pool video as a treat. How about that? You want another Tim Pool video? <laughs> all right, hold. You want another Tim Pool video? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta. <laughs> Toss you a tin pool bit. Or, like, if you're really good, I'd give you a Crowder one. Oof. Good old Crowder one. Snack. <laughs> Crowder ones are fun. Let's just let's just watch through a Prager U video. That would be great. Like Candace Owens. God, I've, I'll need oxygen. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, I have padding put on my desk with all the times. But, I'm guys, we don't go to school in Florida. Why would we want to watch Prager U? Just get bored hit myself in <laughs> <laughs> anyways no um so you're doing it to get right on no <clears throat> so as you guys may know or like uh, the audience may know um a few weeks a few days ago but it's just now it's like over a little over a week um the fbi has went and raided someone which we're not like i said don't want to talk about the, the case the case the crime it happened. The FBI raided somebody. This was just trying to give you the, the basics. Raided someone. They had a gun safe. The gun safe was per- manufactured by Liberty Safe. The FBI contacted Liberty Safe, giving them the serial number to get inside that safe. And Liberty Safe gave them a backdoor key to get inside that safe. After they did use this, they did have a warrant to search the premise. They had a warrant to search the safe. And Liberty Safe gave them the code. This is what we're going to discuss. This. this is what we're discussing. What the uh, And then also Liberty Safe's um, response to it. Is this a Bud Light moment? <sighs> Hardly. <laughs> but let's discuss. Let's, let's, this, uh, um, so is this on any of you guys' radars or was this mine that like, just popped up? Or did this post in like, everyone else's like uh, YouTube videos or something like that? I saw people talking about it, so I took a look and see what the deal was and mm-hmm. read through it and went, oh, okay. And then that was it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know about like, it until you posted about it. So there, there, were so many, there were so many people on a certain side of politics who were trying to make it mm-hmm. to be something that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of that. Right. And so I was just like, okay. And that's when I got the – that's when I – was reading and found out about the old because they were trying to uh, compare this to the Apple thing, where it's like, Not even no, close. nowhere near close because that was a technological limit and design mm-hmm. feature. Whereas this was, it's a safe. If they want in that safe, they will get in that safe because it's a safe. It's not a technology decryption mechanism that is thwarted. Right. I mean, you get you get a big enough drill. And you drill through that safe and you're in the safe, right? The, the, they can get in there. They don't need you to give them the code. That just helps them save the actual safe for them. Yeah. Wicked Kinder goes, yo, I'm going to sell you a safe in the back door. So, so let's go. All right. The, just just quick. Cause like I, 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 I was not in my lock picking lower rabbit hole at this point. So I have no idea what's happening with this until, until you sit, send us the thing. Uh, I've been stuck in a Australian politics rabbit hole because of youtubers so <laughs> oh man well, the thing too is that 
this was actually a listed feature by this company that if you forget your code, we can lock and lock it for you because mm-hmm. we still have the factory code. So now they're offering, if you don't want that, we can wipe that code out so it doesn't exist, but we're not able to get back in there for you. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. This whole idea, like this unknown thing, if you didn't read the effing manual, <laughs> it's that, they, they talk about it. You can go on their sites and they talk about like, well, if I forget my combo, like if it's the electronics code they're like yes we can get back into it but if it's the you know if it's the mechanical for you know the, you have to dial it in hey you're calling a locksmith <laughs> you know yeah, like these routers i mean a lot of people have routers mm-hmm. and all people have to do to break into those routers is is flip a factory reset on it mm-hmm. right and they know the code because it's the code for every just about every single dang router right Correct. so it's kind of like that Correct. Yeah. 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 And then like, and some of the Linux ones are like, well, you're just, just breaking Linux at that point. You know, you're just going to break Linux. And if someone hasn't updated that router, which most people don't update their router, especially because like, I like PF sense, but it's vulnerabilities is, is the person updating that Linux kernel. <laughs> so, but that's here there, but th- th- that's what I wanted to talk about was, uh, so I did watch this one YouTube video, which is really cool, which I recommend everyone to go off and watch. If you really like to, he does a, he's a locksmith. He did a great breakdown of this lock and stuff like that. It is Wayne Winton, Wayne Winton locks and safe talks about the Liberty safe stuff. It's a great breakdown. None of the politics, just more of a, a locksmith talking about the locks and the different side of the locks. I can break it down what he said, but trust me, he did a better video. Please watch that video. It's a lot of better video, a lot better than what I could break it down. Is to. this the guy I see on? Is this the guy I see on TikTok and Instagram who shows like he'll show a lock and this is how great this lock is? And but if you were to take it and go bang on the desk once, it pops right open. You know that he, sort of thing. He's showing he, how, he, how bad some locks yeah, are. Yeah, he talks about that too. Yeah, uh, you might be thinking of the lot picking lawyer as well because that dude just. That has a bunch of videos where he just takes a bunch of locks and goes, "Cool, here's how you, here's how easy you're able to open it, and yeah. it's open." Yeah. Moving on, yeah. it's like let's do this again. Let's show you. All right, and it's open. Oh yeah, he's paid two hundred dollars for something that somebody could break in thirty seconds. Get fucked. <laughs> I love watching these guys. So I mean, I know they, probably, they both probably do it, but it's just funny because mm-hmm. the one guy's like, he'll do he'll do what he says, where he's like, "Here's a lock, boom, okay. Here's another one, there, okay. Here's another one. You know, he just and he just takes like a shim or something and just mm-hmm. it's open, you know, because it's designed wrong. Or this one, you, you hit it on the literally hit it on the corner once and it pops it and freeze it because it's mm-hmm. it's made so badly and it's right. that's a service because he's providing to say, okay, these are a whole bunch of locks. Don't want to go by if you want your stuff to actually be lock proof. And he get, does give ones that are good. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah the, the guy here talking about the Liberty. I mean, so the Liberty safes were a combination of both electric. <laughs> electronic ones and the the manual rotary correct dial yes one. yes yeah and most of the time most companies will make a safe they will not make the lock most of the time the lock is sourced from a different vendor just kind of like how i especially in the video wayne talked about it where like ford will make everything like that or sort of dodge will make a truck but they buy the engine from cummins cummins put the engine put the engine in and dodge cummins but it dodge never made the cummins engine that's come from cummins so it's just like that. So that digital lock came from there. So not only does that backdoor key exist from the lock manufacturer, right, that they may have it, but the um, Liberty Safe also have it. And this is what made me want to talk about it is because this is the same thing we talk about when it comes to encryption and putting backdoors into things. And this is the Apple thing. If you put a backdoor in it, not only it does it let like three-letter agencies in, whether you think three-letter agencies should be at have access or not, that's not sort of the point. But the thing is, if this is when we got a lot of different security people got into because the code, the backdoor code, eventually sometimes does get released out in the wild. And that's what's dangerous because if that code's not unique per device or there's some sort of algorithm that is created that tells you what that code is, the code is unbreakable. Uh, there's a backdoor key out there. There used to be a time where the I, I created a spreadsheet um, back in the day where I could figure out the backdoor BIOS password for a laptop based off the serial number. There's a small algorithm that is made that tells you what the backdoor key is and just boop, unlocks the BIOS. 
and, and one has to wonder about if, if you're that concerned about anybody getting into the contents of your safe, why would you go with the digital one that has the back door on it? Yeah, correct. Convenient. Well, they also didn't RTFM. They didn't read the manual. Didn't read the manual. Didn't read the manual. They didn't know. And why would uh, you read the manual? It's like the terms of service. It's just you just, safe. Man. You just scroll through it, right? You just go through it and hit OK. You know, just you don't even yeah. think about it. You just don't think about everything you're signing away just because it's there. And you oh, my see favorite South Park episode. <laughs> my favorite South Park episode is when they <laughs> sign away the user. Get this. Get this. You click, you hit the button. <laughs> you hit it. And you you agreed. It. You agreed. But no, the and yes, I completely also re- I completely also realize that the FBI wanted in that safe. They're getting in that safe because they would have just cut it out from the the house, took it to wherever they wanted to, hired a safe cracker, and they would have got hot to hire a locksmith. They would have gotten to it. They could have got the angle grinder out cut the door off cut in they would have got inside right i also we also know that you know they can also use the wet noodle to find the combo out <laughs> like i just tell people the <laughs> you know you you can have the safest password in the world but if you know the wet noodle can get it out of you well the wet noodle is going to get it out of you beat someone it, and i was watching beat someone was, till they get, get it the wet yeah. noodle okay thanks. i was watching um read the other uh last night and i watched somebody react to it and there's still my favorite scene in there where they're talking about this vault was unbreakable and it's an unbreakable vault what are mm-hmm. we gonna do how are we gonna get in this unbreakable vault and he just puts his foot through the door next to it reaches mm-hmm. around like, mm-hmm. yeah i love that <laughs> the, the combination changes if it's <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can kinder, uh, so 25 years in IT, I've never seen a simple security screw on a PC case. Yeah, I, I've seen a couple of times, but I've got a bit things of security screws and all security screws failed to the drill. <laughs> <laughs> the best security screw I've ever seen is a script screw. <laughs> <laughs> you strip the screw. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's there. It's in there. Just strip it. JB welded it, security on the security D. Um, but no, that... those, those talking stations come with like a key on the back of it mm-hmm. with a key with another key, so you could take the key out and have a stuck one, so you can lock yeah. that thing in place. Mm-hmm. And you go through the offices, and every single one of them has their keys just sitting in there, they never take them out, that's they never do anything with them, they're just there. Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah. It's... yeah, it's it's fine, like, yeah, but the so. I, yeah, that's the main reason I wanted to bring this thing up because of talking about the idea of like, you know, you put a back door into something, it's someone's going to find a way around it. So that's my main thing. It's like, so when Liberty Safe put these back door codes in these things, are they making unique ones, right? Is there a way to, find, you know, um, we could probably ask them, you know, could ask them, hey, are these unique? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. But are they? Because Office probably says they're unique, but if you're, let's say your name is, um, Let's make up someone that works like we probably does something like this. Dual, you know, producer Dual. And Dual <laughs> has to ship 10 of these Liberty Safe or any safes from any safe company. And he's got to make sure these backdoor key codes and he's got this unique page that he's got to put in and code it right down. Is he going to put a unique one each time on the Pratt Factory floor or is he going to put the same one at all 10 safes and then ship them out? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because it just raises a lot of questions of and there's another thing too there's one more thing on top of that let's say they are completely individualized they're mm-hmm. unique for each single one mm-hmm. there has to be a master spreadsheet somewhere with serial number to mm-hmm. key factory mm-hmm. code key code for them mm-hmm. to unlock it so Correct. somewhere in their data store pray they don't get hacked and that data doesn't get on the internet you know it's like you thought about that too, right? Because that can't be paper. Is it paper? <laughs> well, there's no way that's paper. There's no way that's paper. That isn't a date. You're right. That probably is a, a system, database. A, a web front end. Mm-hmm. It's uh, probably mm-hmm. accessible over the internet. It's on RDS. And like, to... Yeah, it's on RDS and AWS. We all know it's sitting there. <laughs> probably some crappy password on holding it in. The password's yep. probably password123. Yep. Uh, yeah, Wikipedia goes along with customer information and shipping address. Yes, so you know where the safes are and the codes do the master codes to get inside of it. <sighs> yeah, and 
that's one of the, one of the brilliance of Wayne's Witten's video. They were talking about what you can do to your Liberty safe. Um, so you just won't feel like hopeless. It was like, if you wanted to switch it out for a different combination lock, if you want to go back to the dial or get you a different one, but he also warned, like if you stay digital, that he says he, he wanted to say like 98% of all digital locks have a backdoor like electronic lock in it. There is. You know, either it's document or something like 98% of them have it. Well, here's um, the other problem, too, is that a digital lock isn't going to have a large number of keys, no. right? Was that no. like five digits, six digits, maybe? Mm -hmm. How long does it take a cracking program to try every single one of those? Well, uh, so this one safe had a uh, USB port <laughs> and it took the USB rubber ducky trying a bunch of combinations by like, like less than 10 seconds. <laughs> Because it didn't have a fail to ban. <laughs> so it just kept and allowed the rubber ducky to, to brute force it. That's yeah. if that key's not like an, an encrypted 32 bit mm -hmm. E, mm -hmm. which nobody's going to be typing in. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's going to get cracked if somebody's yeah. got physical access to it. It's just the way it is. Oh, uh, we're, we're sorry. Hurt. We're hurt. But not hurt. But because you, you did remember us, Christy yeah. Sipes started cooking and forgot about you. It's okay. We didn't forget about you. And you came back anyways. Heroes always come back. So it's okay. But um, Wayne's video did talk about, you know, how to switch it out for, because he'd like to, he did state that if you have a certain bolt pattern that you can switch it out for and get a locksmith to switch you out for a mechanical lock and how to switch it out. So that being said, if you're in the market for a safe, there's probably some Liberty safe going up real cheap right now. And you switch out <laughs> the safe, <laughs> just hire a locksmith, switch it out. There you go, boys. So I personally don't want a Liberty. Like, uh, uh, I don't need another uh, safe. But I think I, if I find one, a Liberty safe for cheap, I may put one in the studio and switch out the lock. <laughs> this is my snack safe. <laughs> I know. Put, keep oh. it locked up so Spangle doesn't lose his mind when he comes over. You, know. you know, spray paint new Liberty safe or mm -hmm. for real Liberty safe. For real Liberty there. safe. Yeah. But yeah. But you know, we've we've all played Payday too. That safe can be <laughs> drilled, cut, hacked, it can be opened. Um but yeah, that's the yeah, that's the issue with the backdoor key is where is the backdoor key stored? Where are these keys at? Is it in, is it encrypted? I hope it is, <laughs> but we don't know. Um, they are no obligation to tell anyone. Um, they claim that they have um, these safeguards in place to make sure that they're not giving also giving your key to some random stranger. But have you ever been red teamed? Have you had you know? Have you allowed a good pen testing red team come after you and just attempt to get this information? Because I, you know, really harsh. You know what they've done is they just stored all those keys into their last pass, so they're safe. They're protected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> they monitor it with solo wins. Oh my God. <laughs> and they remote in on their home computer. Oh my god, they remote it. He's go to my PC. <laughs> and there's an old old version of Team Viewer. Team Viewer 12. When they get on their Windows 7 PC. Oh my god. Yeah. We don't know. And considering it's a manufacturing floor, yeah, they mostly use older you know PCs. They're not on cutting edge there because it's just a manufacturing floor. It just needs to press out, you know, does things. So yes, it. I think they've put themselves or any person using this type of thing, I think they, you know, unless there is something out there like to demonstrate, I think they need to demonstrate to the customer that they are protecting these keys that they have and hold and protecting it correctly. Or um, be, be, just be, because when it comes to the FBI, the CIA, the rest of the three other agencies, that safe is the safe is getting opened. It's just one is this going to be easier for us. It's more of a, the attack vectors for everything else in the world. That's that's what I'm worried about because, like I said, CIA. Because the CIA even has like a, what is it? The auto dialer machine that sits on the dial, and will just try combos Combinations. until it's finished. It's just a machine. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this thing. It's really neat. It just does clip on and it just uh, takes forever. But you're not having to sit there and do it. They right, have them. They just do it. Yeah, and they got. Yeah, they get unlimited budget, so they just sit there and do it. Uh, let's see. Like in a, 
Well, that, that so much security is minor. Uh, is minor hurdles determined in a determined individual security panel on a garage door versus a pair of tin snips. Yes, most security, most security like door locks stuff like that, which is really designed is to slow you down. So I can pick you up on the camera that there's movement, but there shouldn't be movement. Try to get your face, or I can just slow you down so the cops get there, um, because there's so many different. Um, the lock picking community is huge. The lock picking village at DevCon is also huge, and most security conventions is huge. You can learn these tools to also learn how to pick locks from Tool. You can go to Tool and learn how to lock pick. It's a fun hobby, also. But sorry, man, you wanted to say something? You're muted. They get it. No, I'm not. Uh, no. Die Hard 3, when they get into the cab and he looks over to, to him and says, can you hotwire the car? And after an exchange, he says, yeah, I can hotwire it. <laughs> Thing is, is, it takes too damn long. And he just takes the like the screwdriver into the <laughs> key and just hurt it. Yeah, just hurt. Just force it <laughs> over. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in before someone goes, that's why I use a barrel lock. Oh, man, barrel lock's the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> they actually make some universal uh, barrel lock machine tool that you just shove into any barrel lock and just twist it all the time. It eventually finds all the pins and just opens your barrel lock. Now, barrel lock just... Well, plus, remember, they've, they've been making games for the past eight to ten years that are teaching people how to lock pick, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You yes. play Skyrim, you go, okay, you do the thing, you, do thing, you turn over here, click, Take okay. Attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're teaching you how to do it. Look, they're they're like, training people. The thieves. You brought them up before. Literally, the lock picking lawyer has a utility tool for lock picking that he has created to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep, pretty much. So, if, if, if you're worried about somebody might pick this lock, yeah, there are people that will do it if they're determined and they know what they want to do. They'll do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, it's it's what's going to end up happening. Um, most security is just an illusion um, or like layers. You're just trying to layer things on, slow people down, and backdoor. You, make it, you want to make it inconvenient. Correct. Right? Is it yeah. worth it to get through to get to this stuff? Is what you have worth the layers of protection that you're giving it mm -hmm. uh, to slow somebody down enough? That's all it is. Right. Yeah. And hey, does it mean I don't lock my door? Yeah, I lock my door. <laughs> I mean, you know why I lock my door? Um, because if you're going to pick my lock, you're going to sit on that camera. I'm going to get you in 4K, baby. <laughs> now, if you really want to have a lot of fun, create a honeypot. Mm -hmm. Right. So you make something that looks like it's kind of a little bit hard to get into, but easy enough that once they get into it, they feel like, oh, this is what we were coming after. And the real stuff's hidden away somewhere else. So that's how you yeah. obfuscate security through obfuscation, right? Yeah. I don't lock my truck. Steal it, please, for Wicked Kinder. Um, wow. Um, it's the insurance money. So in, you can buy in Minecraft. Truck. In Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I also don't lock my car doors. <laughs> I only lock my car doors if I'm in it. <laughs> if I'm not in it, the other doors are unlocked. <laughs> One because I don't want no one to break the glass. If you're gonna steal it, you want to steal my car. Please don't break my glass. <laughs> <laughs> the glass is expensive, and the RX8 glass is rare. Please don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, whatever you want inside, just open the door and just take it. You know, trust me. If you're gonna take it, something the super is gonna be covered in candy and garbage. Good luck. <laughs> in the RX8, a little bit of retriever hair too. Yeah, and the RX8, there's nothing in there but oil. If you need oil, man, I've got pre. <laughs> which you need? I got two stroke. <laughs> All the oil you need. It's only thing in there. It's oil and an old garment and a very old garment for reasons. Please don't steal the garment, though. I need that. <laughs> I need the garment, please. Please don't steal the garment. I need they that. They specifically garment. take the or garment. Least. Yeah. There's, yeah. Or they leave stuff. You also in don't want to have that garment on you. I recommend not having it. <laughs> I have it for reasons. You don't want it. <laughs> I've got mine with the Morgan Freeman voice. Uh, tells nice. me where to go. Thanks. Oh, man. Good old Morgan Freeman. But yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That's what it comes to locks and lock big. That's, that's why I found it. This thing is so interesting. Yeah, it's, because it brought people into this com for conversation. It's, it's that part of uh, the price of conveniency. Yeah. You have, you have locked yourself out of this safe. You can either pay the money to have somebody else figure it out for you, or you get the safe that is the back door where you can just call and go, hey, 
um, I lost my safe. Can you open it for me? And they just press a button and they open it. Right. They give yeah. you the code. So yeah. it's the, the yeah, price of so. convenience. Yeah. It, yeah. I'll, tell, I'll, give you one, I'll do you one better work at Kinder. I was uh, 18. Somebody broke into oh. my car, stole my uh, boom box that was mm-hmm. my cassette player. And along with it, stole a couple of sets I'd made recording Bob and Tom off of the radio for the first year on the air. Ouch. Uh, Wiki Kinder goes, yep, learned a 17-year-old when someone busted my window, going to show my age and steal the faceplate off my stereo. That sucks. Um, I used to think someone wouldn't steal my. I never like, mounted a radio that I had. It was the cheap $20 Walmart radio that you can get. I just bought that. <laughs> I didn't mount it. I just kind of like put it in there, dangled the cables off, set it to the side, because it's like that cheap Walmart one. I just needed something to play the radio in the car mm-hmm. and play CDs on. And they also stole like uh, my... Um, uh, my sweaty uh, MP3 player that had the armband, the old school MP3 players. It's all text based because it's just a MP3 player. Mm-hmm. Stole that too. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I had somebody still a, a disc player that I had that I had a, a cassette attachment into my car at that time, mm-hmm. and I had it set up on my dashboard. And somebody got in there and stole it. Mm-hmm. Just this a CD player. The, the saddest was... thing that ever got stolen from me is the PlayStation One at my dad's house. And they had, and it had my memory card in it. Ugh. So it just had only my memory card in it, and the first disc of Legend of Dragoon. Oh, <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, that's the saddest thing. Oh, most, most of it I didn't have. Like I had a broken down Buick that nobody wanted to look at, <laughs> <laughs> and then my current car. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, man. Uh. Exactly. Exactly what you can do. Quick, burn him at the stake. Yes, yeah. I had level ninety nine characters on Final Fantasy seven on that memory card. Oof, <laughs> Oof. the worst. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's the thing when it came to like because like you you exp- like I experienced this thing with dealing with different hardware. Like I was totally against the Unify um, networking equipment because you know when we like a uh, it was when. Um, Nisa and I was working together. Um, I didn't allow him in the network equipment because he does bad stuff. He bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he really wanted to end. And what she discovered is that Unify used a MongoDB database for a lot of different things. At the time, they were using MongoDB. And he investigated it and realized that there's default password on that database. <laughs> so all he needed was physical access to the box that was on it. Bob's his uncle. He was inside. He cre- not he created himself a super user account in this database, and then made it so flagged it so I didn't even see it in the user chart. I wouldn't even see it; it wouldn't pop up. <laughs> we told Unify that he did this, and they go, "Well, that's a feature, not a bug." <laughs> Swore for Unify equipment. After that, they finally got past that. I think someone probably like poked him. Or because like I was not shy about sharing it with anyone that had asked me a question about Unify. I shared it with them. I've given it to like security people, which I'm sure someone has probably popped several different boxes. We do find them, and it has been fixed. So I'm trying to just laugh it out about it. But like, you know, it, but it it's was... good to know that some tech companies take the Bethesda approach to things mm-hmm. where if there's bugs. No, 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 it's not a bug. It's just how the game is, guys. Yeah, it's how it's what makes the game more interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. When you go like, well, what if you forget your password? Then it should lock me out forever. <laughs> start over. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh it. Start again. Start over. Start over. You can't get back in. You know, it's the same thing. If I forget my encryption key, you're like, oh, sorry, you're, you're boned. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Um, uh, we can only think I use them as their cheap ass bridges. I do have some cheap ass bridges. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some good cheap ass bridges. <laughs> and some cheap ass access port. There's some cheap equipment though. They do some cool stuff that you want for other network equipment, like their augmented reality, where you can take your phone, scan it over the switch, and it gives you good outlay of what each cable is doing. You know, if you programmed it correctly in the unified equipment. But you know, <laughs> do I want that over security? No, <laughs> I'll take security. 
Um, Ace goes, I have so many Adventure Quest accounts that I cannot access because I forgot my password. Also, emails to sign up for. Oof. 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 Ouch. That's the oof. Oof. So sad. Yeah, that, that sucks. I'm sorry, man. That stinks. <laughs> that stinks. Good luck. Um, you, know, you can always you can't just, hear you, Reinhold. You can always just pay someone to help crack them into there. You know, there are your accounts. If you want to never trust technology again, just listen to the Security Now podcast. <laughs> Security Now makes me like uh, only want to like using my old Core Two Duo laptops because <laughs> it's too slow to do anything else but what I want it to do. <laughs> it's, 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 it doesn't have the power to do like oh I'm, I can't do that. I just locked it up. Oh, you just locked this thing up now. <laughs> can't do that. You know, it's a great story. Um, on, there was once a great story on there where they would, um, there was some like lights nest, like a home system, you know, with the mm-hmm. home networking and th- stuff like that. That we start just started doing at the time, and they, it was secure. They would use a certificate on there, but okay. in order to update their certificate remotely, mm-hmm. they couldn't figure out how to do it right. So, what they did was they put the public key on the device for them to use when they wanted to update that certificate. Oh, sorry. They had the private key on there. I was just joking with you. You need private key? Yes. That way they can encrypt it and, and update it and put it back on. It was on the device there. I'm sure the that's fine. That's fine. There's no problem with. There's that. no problem there. I don't know. There's nothing. Yeah. There's, they couldn't use that. There. They couldn't use that to get into your Wi-Fi because now your device is on the Wi-Fi of your home, and do anything they wanted to on any internal devices there at all. That's that would yeah. never have happened at all. Anyways, this way you should learn subnetting <laughs> <laughs> or VLANs and put all your I- yes, IoT. Yes, works. Yeah, put all your IoT devices on network like that. Um, that's my favorite. Like I've got a network on my um in the house called cheese doesn't talk outside the network it's a vlan that it's a uh, it's behind another firewall and it so it, it's it's where i like to put things <laughs> which i don't know what it's doing <laughs> or i don't know where i got like wh- what is this thing what is it i, I put it there <laughs> i put it on the cheese network this looks like it might be important hide mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or or like because i want to use something i go like well this will this thing work like i'm so like this um I really like I've been using this meter um, um, app for, you know, for barbecuing. It's great. I can sit there and do temperature, Bluetooth on my phone, and it's cloud-based. It's really neat. Um, but I realized, does this thing work off the internet? Does this thing talk to servers to that? So I threw it on the cheese network and found out. And no, no, it will. It, can't, it won't do the cloud stuff. It won't go off and talk to the my other devices and give me alerts that way. But it will completely work without the internet access to the internet now they're like whole nine yards it'll just bluetooth to my thing and give me temperatures and um it'll do everything like it, even give the estimates of time it's so it's i like it so far so far it could update tomorrow i'm not like endorsing meter by this thing i'm just saying like at you know as it stands there that's fair a lot of the new ransomware stuff has been out the last few years mm-hmm. will are coded so that if they do not detect an internet by doing a phone home back to a specific mm-hmm. IRC channel or a specific web page or something like that, mm-hmm. they will not run. They will just sit there dormant. And then every time they starts up, it'll try again. Mm-hmm. So as soon as that device gets put on an internet connection, mm-hmm. boom, it starts up and starts just doing everything. Right. You could yeah. have that thing sitting here for a year yeah, in an isolated network and think, Oh, it's, been doing nothing all this time. I'm just gonna throw it on the, the public network, and you, mm-hmm. as soon as you plug it in, you're owned. Yeah, I, I would pick. I, I would pick up the the phone home and trying to phone home. That's yeah, so yeah, up. you have to monitor that. You have to look at the yeah. logs. Okay, is it trying to get out there, or mm-hmm. is it just you? Know, yeah, yeah, because nothing's gonna like it's gonna try to find the like the home router. I'm like, cool. The only thing that should be on there is like a DHCP request. <laughs> <And> DNS. <laughs> I'm on DHCP. I want DNS. Cool. Anything else? You want anything else? Nope. You want an update? Cool. That's about it. These look like standard updates, still like that. It was the same thing, like um, some ransomware where they try to detect if um, if it's like a VM or not. Um, so you have to give it more cores. So it's like, hey, am I a VM? You know, um, 
but it's the exact same way where um so like my my nos boxes my nos's are on their own little separate network and then certain things talk to the nos boxes but they're on its own but they it will only communicate that way so like if you're on the home network you can't find the nos's but if you're supposed to find the nos you can find the nos does that make sense anyways i i like my nasses so <laughs> so at the end of the day what do you think about the way Liberty Safe handled the situation? They handled it according to their policy. Um, and if there's one thing manual, I, I can fault them for. Okay. So they responded to a warrant. Mm -hmm. That warrant wasn't issued to them. That warrant Correct. was issued to the device, yes. which they technically are not the owner of at that point. Correct. Therefore, they are not legally required to do anything. Correct. But they did. Now, anyway. if they had gotten a warrant compelling them to do mm -hmm. it, and I think that's what they changed their policy now to, is that they have to have a subpoena mm -hmm. to provide the information so that they can use it instead of just a straight warrant. Mm -hmm. um, but just, just reacting to the warrant like that, like they did, they did, you know, provide access to a device they technically did not have ownership of correct and we're not legally required to do so correct yeah i don't believe they should have did that um did they also save this man safe because the i don't think the guy was going to give them the code for it and was the judge probably eventually going to just give them a different subpoena to be them to safe yeah yeah. Well, they have no idea whether he would have given the code or not because they at correct. the time were arresting him at a shopping mall mm-hmm so they never gave him the opportunity to say, okay, here's my code. Go ahead and open it yeah, or whatever, because yeah. you have a warrant for it. So uh, that means now that knowing that the person who it was probably would not have tried to do so, but correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And that's probably means the FBI, this is probably not their first rodeo that they've called a company up to go get the safe go bro. This is probably the first. Well, you know, thing. it's not, you know, you know, they probably have their own on speed dial. They know who, you know, Mm -hmm. They know all these people and they mm -hmm. probably have a contact that they just connect into. And mm -hmm. I think they even stated that that was, you know, a normal yes. procedure that they've mm -hmm. done several times before. Yep. They just find the safe, get the show number off and it's just a part of the service that they just do. They just call and contact and they get the code for it and open the safe up. Yep. Uh, like Kendra goes, uh, uh, yes, lawyer scare tactics are a hell of it. incentivizing. They sure are. Yeah. 100%. You know, it's, a, uh, um, it's, it's one of those things <laughs> that they like to do. No, I don't think, uh, me personally, I don't think Liberty Safe should have gave up the code. I think they should have fought tooth and nail to give up something like that because I think they're gonna, they probably lost a lot of brand faith. Do I think it's a Bud Light position for them? Like, no, I don't think they Bud Light, but you know, I think the only person that's Bud Light is Bud Light, it, you know, is Bud Light. <laughs> Well, and the people who've given up on Bud Light going and buying another Anheuser Busch to replace it, which is like you're not you're not doing anything other than harming that one brand, which isn't it's the same beer. It's just, you're not you're not doing anything. It's the same company owning the same stuff, and you're just buying it from them. They're getting paid. You know, it's not all you might American, have done is harm a brand. Not even American beer anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, the Grand Tour showed us that it's, it's, pro it's owned by China now, anyways. It's well, so, supposed uh, to be German to begin with, but that's another story. That's the first of some German. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost Oktoberfest. Don't sully that. <laughs> I, said, I, need, I need this. I need this for my life. No, um, pumpkin spice beer. Pumpkin oh, God. Spice. Ugh. Ugh. But hey, have your beer, enjoy your beer, what you want. Enjoy your beer. <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna poo poo your yum. If you drink like what it, you want to like drink. It. Yeah, drink what you want to drink. Unless you know who you are, you fireball <laughs> drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no, um, no, I, I, I think Liberty Safe shouldn't have done that unless they completely compelled to get things done. Um, or I also think they probably should do a better job of informing their customers of other than like how oh, you should read the manual, ha 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 ha. More of a you know like 
you know, like, hey, this thing happens, be it more upfront about it, especially this, when someone picks a difference between a mechanical or the electronic safe. Hey, this thing happens. And, and you've got to also understand, too, that if the politics of the situation were different, it would be all the same people screaming about what they did would be screaming that they didn't do it. Because that's what we had with the Apple device. Correct. Because it was considered as a possible terrorism. The police wanted it. All the people who are now complaining about all oh, this, this guy shouldn't have had this happen. His rights should have been protected. We're screaming, hey, Apple, give him the stuff. We need to know this information, right? Mm-hmm. It, the role, the, the, the roles flipped. I mean, there are, there are, you know, individual rights people who are serious about it, who are, are on this, on that side all the time. Mm-hmm. But you see a lot of people who are complaining the loudest were the same people who are complaining about um, Apple and, and even including, you know, Trump and Charlie Kirk and all those people were doing that. Right. So they were all yelling about at Apple, not giving them the, the information. So it seems kind of like a lot of people were more concerned about the appearance of the politics than they were about whether or not this guy's rights were violated or not. Right. Yeah. His, yeah. Uh, it, he's dealing with the FBI. His rights are already being violated. Um, that's the worst part about dealing with the FBI is your rights are probably going to be violated. Uh, one, because they don't have to record the conversation. They, they, they're not going to record the conversation they have with you. And what have they said happened in your conversation is law. So it's the worst. Like when people say don't talk to the cops, talk to the FBI is like 10 times worse because they can just lie. <laughs> And they have lied on people. Um, that's the one thing, like with uh, Ian Freeman. Um, I gotta look at what happened in his case, like some of the stuff that the FBI did with his case is like completely bogus. And watch his, you know, his rights get violated through that one. And trust me, Russ Ulbrich. Um, so yeah. So I, I actually, actually have one interaction with an FBI agent before. Oh, and here it comes. Was, I was in Bloomington. He's was, a fed. Do no, it. No, no, no. So my next door neighbors when I was in Bloomington were Chinese exchange students. And one night they showed up really drunk, really crazy. We heard a lot of yelling and screaming. And when, so when some of my friends came over, they opened the door and the next door neighbor was bleeding on his porch, yelling and screaming. And then we just kind of ignored them. <laughs> because we were just like, I don't know what's going on. They're saying stuff in Chinese that we don't understand. They're uh, so we're just gonna leave this alone. Wow. The next day, I get a knock on the door. Mm-hmm. This guy in a suit and other thing, and he pulls it. He's like, "Hey, do you know your neighbors?" And I was like, "Not really." And he pulls out his FBI badge. He's like, "Well, I'm investigating. Let's go. What happened over there last night?" And I was like. I have no idea, man. <laughs> they just, there was blood, and I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on. He's like, all right, well, we gave the cars like, contact us if you find out anything else. And they just left. Mm. So it just left in my brain. I was like, what the fuck did they do? <laughs> what <laughs> happened over there? <laughs> what did they do? And it's just one of those those memories that were just there that I totally forgot about. It's like something sparked it. I think it was a dream or something. So very Chinese of you to ignore the bloody man, <laughs> just to keep walking. Yeah, yeah. Like I was in like I did not want to get involved with that, sir. I don't know what was happening, and and then and then I would actually have something to tell the FBI agent. And I don't need that in my life. <laughs> Pins the Fed, uh, looking like a man. <laughs> Brian, massive deserter, uh, goes, <laughs> ideally, they could have said, we have a central key with the software update. We no longer have a central key. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's, it's always scary when. Well, you know, so they are making it. it clear to people that if you don't want this feature, mm-hmm. do this and you won't have it anymore. Correct. And yes. it won't be an issue. Correct. Yeah. And if you want to switch your lockout, for the love of all that's holy, hire a locksmith. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hire a locksmith. Do not try to do this on your own because if you mess this up, guess what? You're going to hire a locksmith. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Massive deserter. Yes. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> I dealt with Homeland Security before in IT. I wish Wicked Kendra saying this client got compromised. What interesting, the quest in Judah was interesting. Formatted everything after they left. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. 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 So I uh yeah. Let's see. Brian Deserter <laughs> says just bought a new combo of eBay. What could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It should be perfectly yeah. fine. That's that's where you want to get your tumblers from. Um yeah, just like um let's see, uh what I was gonna go to. Um I bought a Tumblr off eBay. I mean, oh is that, <laughs> is, what's wrong with that? <laughs> or off Amazon, I, I thought right? it was Yahoo that bought bought Tumblr. <laughs> I thought it was Yahoo that bought Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've been out of brush with the FBI for a lot, like for decades, and I like to keep it that way. And every time I even think I'd even like smell their hair or like erase all my hard drives and go like, "Whoops, starting over." Hit the eBay <laughs> button. Well, I hit the knee back. I, I at one time, I at one time had a top security clearance in the Navy. So yeah, I I know the feeling of uh, being watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like to keep it. I like to keep them at bay. Anyways, this episode's getting well, plus, plus all of us are on watch list. I know you you realize that, right? During Obama, they put anybody who identifies as libertarian on watch list. Well, good thing I don't identify as that. Whew. Good thing I don't. Good thing I don't identify as either. As it um. Afro well, they, monarch anarchists. <laughs> Afro uh, anarcho monarchist. Okay. <laughs> it's like the what was that caucus I started at one time was the uh the anarcho monarchists <laughs> caucus. I'm the Afro anarcho monarchist, so we're anarcho mo- a- monarchist, which black picture. So what it's gonna be great, that, my- that- that uh, convention of three people is is mm-hmm. a lot of fun, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we prefer to not call it a convention, but call it royal court. Um, <laughs> yeah, before this episode we get too long in the tooth, I'd like to thank everyone for like coming on this journey. Like I said, this could be a good time to pick up a very inexpensive Liberty Safe. <laughs> just make sure you do your due diligence and switch it to code. Your locks, just like if you had a um, Kia or a Hyundai. <laughs> But you want to call a locksmith. <laughs> you get things set up. And um, I think we learned a lot of things about security because backdoors are bad. IoT devices being on the network, bad. Um, things don't getting updates, also bad. Because, you know, if anything ever happens in Liberty Safe, what happens to all those backdoor keys? <laughs> <laughs> they shut down the servers. <laughs> Because I didn't know do my they, safe. Had, do they sell know my, the database? If I didn't know my safe it, had a live service. Let's just say, <laughs> let's say, just just say someone buys it. You know, mm-hmm. you know. Let's just say, like, um, the all right. Let's say this. Let's say some. There's a Nasdaq trading company. Make up this fake colony. Let's call this company the Thieves Guild <laughs> International. <laughs> Buy <laughs> Liberty Safe. <laughs> Whoop de doo. <laughs> Acquisitions unlimited. <laughs> Acquisitions, <laughs> international <laughs> acquisitions. God, D twenty bonder right now. Oh yeah. man, that'd be kind of fun. Anyways, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to go that route. Like I said, we're getting long to the tooth, super long. Is there anything you guys want to say before I close this episode out? Uh, enjoy all the games that you guys are currently playing, be it free to play individuals or Boulder's Gate or Armor Core or the Denuvo Laden Payday Three. I just I just wanted to get into a little bit of the uh, history of the microcosm of the um, societal evolution for the presentation period. So if if we take a look at that, hit the dumb button. Hit the dumb button. <laughs> Should I just like removed him from the call? Hit the, yeah, hit the remove button. Just completely come remove. back next week and I'll be finishing up. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's still going. He's still talking. Uh, yeah, but no, yeah. So you guys, see you guys next week. Um, thank you if you made it this far in the episode. You guys are the true fans, and I'd like to thank you if you're listening to this as a podcast. I want you guys to know that this this episode, the show, is recorded live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday night. So come hang on us live. Come talk to us. The people's chats that we've read, they're not giving us money. They're just hanging out with us, having this conversation, forming this opinion live on the air, having fun. So please, yay. I enjoy the 
almost close to 300 people of you guys who download this podcast every week. I freaking amazing that you guys keep downloading this thing and listening to this thing. I think you guys are awesome and amazing, and thank you. Um, but I do wish some of you guys would come and hang out live. Um, I probably should do a um, you know like survey to find out if there's a better time to go live for majority of you guys. But you know, but that's here or there. I'll, I'll do that later. Later when we become a professional podcast. Um, <laughs> You just want to beat Brian Nichols' numbers, that's all. Oh, yeah, we just got to beat those numbers. That'd be easy. That'd be easy. That'd be easy. We then we'll just steal his content, react to him, and beat his numbers that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way Tom Woods did it, right? Then move to California. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> and no, stop it. Bad, right? Hold bad. <laughs> Anyways, I like to thank you guys. You can watch this episode. You can watch her watch us live on twitch.tv slash we are libertarians. That's with the letter R for R. So we are libertarians. You also find us on youtube.com slash we are libertarians and come watch us. Like I said, come watch us live or keep listening to us on and pick up the podcast. You can pick us up on we are libertarians.com. Get the RSS feed that way. So, you know, so thank you everybody and uh, have a good night. Anyways. Hey